welcome into Cowboys Rewind. I'm Danny Sarek, and I'll be recapping this week's team news, giving you the best content DallasCowboys.com has to offer. The 2-6 Cowboys are coming off a 23-9 divisional loss to the Eagles. However, in a struggling NFC East, the division is still up for grabs. Dallas is coming off their best performance defensively. However, on offense, we'll have to continue to push through some new adversity. The Cowboys started third-string rookie quarterback Ben DiNucci last week against the Eagles. However, he will not be starting this week against the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers. Dallas will be going with either Garrett Gilbert or Cooper Rush, who was the Cowboys' backup for the last three three years prior to bringing release this spring and then brought back to the team about two weeks ago. Our Nick Eatman sat down with Cowboys Chief Operating Officer Stephen Jones, who shared some insight on what he's expecting to see from this week's Cowboys Steelers matchup. Hello, everyone. I'm Nick Eatman here, joined by Stephen Jones, Cowboys Chief Operating Officer. And Stephen, let's get right to it. We got another great matchup going on here with the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're undefeated. It seems like, you know, when you got a situation with the quarterbacks, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But the road just doesn't get any easier with Pittsburgh coming to town. No, Pittsburgh is certainly a, a great football team this year. They're, like you said, the only undefeated team. They got a great coach and Coach Mike Tomlin. Got some great veteran players, starting with the quarterback with Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, certainly, they've always played great defense uh, there in Pittsburgh, and it's no different this year. They're playing at a very high level, and we're going to have our hands full. and. Uh, as usual, as we know, uh, those Steeler fans travel too. So uh, I know they're trying to get uh, get in the building and uh, get to be a part of this as well. But uh, you know, uh, you know, last week I think we really showed improvement. And uh, on the defensive side of the ball, certainly we're going to need to improve again. And uh, we got our challenges there at the quarterback position again this week. But uh, I feel like we're, we've had a great week of practice and. Uh, we're ready to go to work and win a football game. Let's talk about the, the defense. Like you said, uh, you, you saw a lot of improvements there. What specifically? Was it taking the ball away? Was that one, or was it just an aggressive nature? There was, some of those fumbles were, were really like off the yeah. blitz. Well, I think it starts with that. I mean, anytime you can win the turnover margin, you give yourself a chance. Now, we didn't get it done uh, against Philadelphia, but uh, certainly that was a big part of it. But uh, you know, the other thing, we didn't make the mistakes early uh, in terms of uh, getting ourselves behind. So we were able to uh, really uh, use some of our edge players, our pressure players, as you said, had some, had some good quarterback hits, some good sacks. Uh, you know, I think really the defense forced, you know, forced the issue and caused the turnover. So uh, that was a really big thing. And then, you know, after about the first series or two, I think we really dialed in. On our, uh, on our run game in terms of stopping the run. And uh, early on it looked a little suspect, but uh, I think we were able to tighten that down. And, uh, you know, we've just got to continue to try to eliminate turnovers on the offensive side of the ball. And uh, I think good things are going to happen for us. I think when you look at a guy like Trayvon Diggs, he, he's a talented rookie. And you see that game, you see the talent, you see the rookie mistakes at times. But it seems like he's got a terrible memory it was w with that's what you need as a cornerback, and he just keeps coming back. That is, and he's going to learn. I mean, you know, he's going to be better with his eyes. Uh, certainly, uh, he's very confident in his ability to go make plays. You know, one of the things we loved about him coming out of Alabama were, were his ball skills, and you saw that in action uh, there against Philadelphia, getting the two picks, tracking the long ball. Of course, made a great break uh, on what would have been a pick six had he been able to come up with it. But uh, uh, you know, there's just some little things he'll continue to work on. I think he sees and wants uh, to be a great player, and I think he's going to be one. Uh, I think he's going to do everything it takes uh, to be a great player. And as he does that and he eliminates some of these uh, uh, plays, bigger plays against him, uh, he's going to be right there at the top. He's got great size, great length, great speed, great ball skills. You know, he's what you want to draw up for a cornerback. Cornerback Trayvon Diggs had a breakout game against the Eagles last week and tallied a pair of interceptions. Don't go anywhere. We hear from the rookie next. Cowboys Rewind is brought to you by AT&T Academy, the official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys, and by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass.
Eagles back at their 49. Four-man rush. Defender fell down. Wentz back throwing deep to the post. And the ball's intercepted by Diggs. At the one, he slides in the end zone, gets up and runs out. Comes to the 15. Coming left to the 20. To the 30. Breaks a tackle and goes down at the Dallas 31. Second interception of the night. Fourth takeaway of the night. In week eight against the Eagles, Dallas had their best performance defensively. They forced four turnovers, including two interceptions by rookie cornerback Trayvon Diggs, the first two of his career. Diggs says now that he's eight games into his NFL career, he feels like the game is really starting to slow down for him. This was our, our best defensive game. Um, you know, we made a lot of plays. We was out there competing and fighting hard. And yeah, I think this is by far uh, one of our best performances. Yeah, um, everything's starting to come together. You know, more repetitions that I'm getting and, you know, uh, f uh, familiar with the routes and things like that and the game speeds is, you know, adjusting and, you know, just getting better every game, just trying to improve every game and, you know, learn from my mistakes uh, and just, you know, try not to make the same mistakes and just keep fighting. You spend more time watching the picks or watching the mistakes that you were talking about? Um, I typically like to watch the mistakes. I like to watch the things that I do wrong. You know, um, you know, making a play on ball, making a play on the ball. You know, catching ball in the session, yes, yeah, it's great. But you know, it's things that you know I need to work on and get better. You know, I'm looking for things to do to get better every day. You know, when I go into practice, I want to work on something. You know, so you know, it's good and all. You know, uh, you know, caught in a session, but you know, I'm looking for things to get better at. What are those things do you think you need to get better at? Um, just, you know, just staying more disciplined, um, getting more used to, you know, how the quarterback releasing the ball, like the timing on things and, you know, just staying in phase, just little stuff and, you know, just little stuff that, you know, I practice every day, you know, I just keep practicing, keep practicing, keep going at it, you know, not giving up and just keep going and, you know, I'm going to get it. Trayvon, when you do look back at some of the interceptions, how encouraging was the rush and cover working together? Uh, it was good. It was it was perfect. Um, you know, everybody's doing their job. Everybody's you know locked in, focusing, competing, and you know winning on winning their one on one. So you know, uh, everyone doing the right things, and you know winning their one on one, you see the result. How were you able to uh, kind of forget a bad play and just move on to the next one? I really talked about corners have to do that. It seems easier said than done. How, how are you able to do that? Yeah, uh, you just got to have short memory. Like, you just got to go out there and know, you know, that, you know, you're going to be out here competing. Everyone professionals, you know, so, you know, you just got to compete. Make sure you win your one-on-one -on -one and just focus, you know. Uh, you're going to get a, a pass caught on you or, you, you know, you some, maybe not. You maybe don't get a, a pass caught on you, but regardless, you got to keep fighting. It's a lot of football left, and, you know, you just got to think about that next play, next play. Against the Eagles, the Cowboys defense looked cohesive for the first time all year. In addition to Trayvon Diggs' two picks, linebacker Leighton Van Der Esch had a strip sack. Safety Donovan Wilson forced a fumble, and quarterback Carson Wentz was sacked four times. Don't go anywhere. On the other side of the break, we hear from two former Cowboys safeties on what they liked from the Cowboys defense last week and how they can continue to have another strong outing this week against the Steelers. It's taken some time for the Cowboys defense to really take hold of this new defensive scheme. They struggled all year in stopping the run and stopping opponents from putting points on the board. However, last week against the Eagles, the Cowboys defense finally played in unison, despite that 23-9 final result in favor of Philly. Former Cowboys safeties Danny McRae and Barry Church joined Nui Scruggs on their podcast, The Players Lounge, where they discuss why the Cowboys defense should feel confident entering the Steelers game. The Cowboys defense has to feel better because they're on national TV. They've been taking a beating. They were dead last against the run. They were last in points giving up, and, and they... They showed themselves, okay? Four sacks of Carson Wentz. They got turnovers against him. Uh, they showed up, especially Tank Lawrence, who is the highest paid defensive player on the team. We saw Trevon Diggs, who ended up, he got beat for a touchdown, but he ended up with, ended up with two interceptions here. So these guys showed up because a lot of us had rightly criticized their performance. So we want to make sure here on a Wednesday we do acknowledge what the Cowboys defense did against Philadelphia in a losing effort. They showed some fight because we've been questioning whether they had some. 
Yeah, we, we've been questioning a lot of it, and a lot of them were, you know, rightfully so, put on, uh, you know, the milk carton list and, and the all milk carton team. But a couple of candidates, they, they jumped off the milk carton. We saw where they were, you know, the, the missing the missing child forms and all that stuff are put away. Um, so I'm going to have to give shout out to D-Law out there, man. He, you know, I, I give him heck all the time because, you know, he's making all this money and he, he hasn't really performed to what his uh, his bill is. So for me, um, he was out there. He played great against the run. He had pressure on, on wins pretty much consistently and uh, he was beaten consistently beating single uh, one-on-one blocks out there and that's what we needed him to do uh, from the beginning of the season because we knew as long as he was able to do something this D-line was able to do something our defense was going to be able to produce some type of takeaway and they were able to do that uh, now number 27 out there uh, <laughs> we, we knew where he was he was on a lot of highlight reels so it ain't like he was coming yeah, yeah. Diggs, we knew where he was out there and uh, Tavon, I'm sorry about that. Trayvon Diggs, we knew where you were. You were on a lot of highlight reels, but I will say this. You fought hard, and you were able to come back. You got beat for the touchdown. He, Fogum had you a couple times out there, but you didn't. You had a quick memory. You let that under the side, and you had a couple picks out there. So I have to give props to you as well. And uh, for me, I mean, that, that pretty much does it. I mean, everybody else, they were just, you know, okay out there. But the guys that got off the milk carton, they did their thing. And uh, got to give shout-outs to the defense. Yeah, I, I'm going to give them all a shout out. I mean, they still struggled against the run, but I mean, the effort and the hustle, I saw it there. It was led by, by D-Law. I seen them making sacks. I seen them stopping the run. I seen them, yep. you know, planting and retracing and coming, coming, tackling guys on screens, receivers. I seen them doing all that. And that's what we talked about. Watch me. Watch how I play. Follow me and play like I do. And I think he did that uh, on, on Sunday and, and it showed, you know, team wide. And, uh, you know, I, I started off positive, so I'm going to go ahead and say, goodness gracious, Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson, they tried to give us a – they was giving us some confidence out there, man, because they stopped, they, they stopped, running, they stopped running the ball. Carson Wentz out there throwing uh, Hail Marys, uh, you know, the, the, I, I don't know what the heck he was doing, but he, he helped us out. He gave us some confidence. I really, really hope that we can carry this over, you know, for the rest of the season. No matter what happens out there, you know, if you overmatch, if some, if some guys make some big plays, I just want to yeah. make sure that – that, that you continue to fight and hustle and, and some of those things will work out for you man like you, you, you'll, you'll, you'll end up in the right position just by hustling sometimes and, and, and we saw that happen on Sunday night Listen live to the Players Lounge weekdays at 2.30 on DallasCowboys.com Defensive end Demarcus Lawrence said earlier this week that it takes time to truly understand and properly execute a new defensive scheme, which is exactly what the Cowboys have been experiencing this year. He adds that the coaching staff is putting the players in positions to be successful. And now that the scheme is starting to open up, it's allowing them to make for more plays, which we saw against the Eagles with those four forced turnovers. Don't go anywhere. On the other side of the break, we look at what the Pittsburgh defense brings to the table this week. Stay with us. Welcome back in to Cowboys Rewind. Pittsburgh boasts a top five defense. They've recorded 10 interceptions through just seven games and a league high 30 sacks. The margin of error for the Cowboys offense this week is slim to none. Keep in mind the Achilles heel for this team has been turnovers all year. Dallas has a minus 11 turnover ratio, which is the worst in the league. Let's hear from the Talking Cowboys podcast on what this Pittsburgh defense is bringing to town. First string on the defense for the Pittsburgh Steelers, mm. all first round picks. So I guess one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of their 11 starters, first round picks in terms of this Pittsburgh defense. Oh, and by the way, the reigning AFC defensive player of the week, Stefan Tuitt, is coming off that left edge. And so you've got quite the task whenever yeah. it comes up against the Steelers defense this week. But whenever it comes to the front seven, or the secondary, which one scares you the most in the matchup with the Cowboys this week, Kekma, whenever it, it really could go either way? Man, when you go through those names and all it, it says to me is just the legacy that the Pittsburgh Steelers have had on defense for so many years. Mm -hmm. And it just started from, I mean, from you go back to the steel curtain and more recently the Dick LeBeau uh, defenses with Tro Troy Palomalu and Porter. I mean, they've always, Harrison, they've always had some guys. And now they just continue that legacy with more dogs. And, you know, mm -hmm. we talked about Joe Hayden yesterday and his ability to, you know, cover guys. And he's just uh, the master of that zone defense that they play. But also Minka Fitzpatrick. Minka Fitzpatrick is from Alabama's 
Man, he's about as hard-hitting as they come, and he's going to be meeting Ezekiel Elliott a lot uh, at the line of scrimmage. So you, you go through those names, but, I mean, guys like Devin Bush, who's hurt and is out for the year, but, man, you talk about a young linebacker that is a dog and flies around. T.J. Watt, Bud Dupree, all of those guys, man. And, and it's not just uh, the, the, those guys. It's just the rotation that they have with additional guys. Cameron, Hay Cameron Hayward, uh, Ironhead Hayward's uh, son. Mm -hmm. Another guy with it, been in the, been in the league for, uh, I believe, 11 years, but has a motor has a motor and is a big part of what they do as far as being a run stuffer. So the Cowboys offensive line, I know that's not fancy talk, uh, but they're going to have their work cut out for them. But that secondary, Minka Fitzpatrick, but also Terrell Edmonds, you talk about him out of Virginia Tech, he's a big part. Of, he's like the glue to that whole thing. So, I mean, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense is like, you know, release the Kraken every time they take <laughs> the field. So this is going to be interesting to see how we, uh, you know, gain any success on this defense and it's going to have to be inch by inch. The Steelers defense has stolen the show for them this year, but what about their offense? We've got you covered on Pittsburgh's offensive weapons next. Pittsburgh's offense is led by two-time Super Bowl champion and six-time Pro Bowl quarterback Ben Roethlisberger. While their defense has been the star of the show this year, the offense has still played a major role in their unblemished record. Let's listen to the Mix Shots podcast from this week for a closer look at some of Pittsburgh's offensive threats. Big Ben has at the receiving core is uh, really that is something that has taken them to another level, even though it hasn't been reflected in their total yards, which is only 25th in the league, they are up there amongst the top scoring teams in the league, helped along by an opportunistic defense as well. But, uh, you know, with their receivers, with Juju Smith-Schuster, as well as the rookie Chase Claypool, who's added a whole new dimension to this offense, and Deontay Johnson, James Washington, at, at tight end, the addition of Eric Ebron, uh, it, it's pretty salty offense to go up against. Yeah, and if you look at, um, you know, their 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 positions and their starts, they've been pretty uh, consistent offensively on on who they've been able to send out there. Uh, yeah, and so that that certainly makes a difference. And look, you you can cover up some of your smudges. You can't cover up your offensive line. I'm sorry, you you can't fake that. Uh, and, and, and you're right, Bill. When you can do what they've done with the consistency on their offensive line uh, and, and then look at where the Cowboys were uh, prior to the draft, what you thought they were going to be on the offensive line, would even Travis Frederick be in there? Uh, yeah, the, 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 this whole thing got turned upside down. So it's one thing to have to start a backup quarterback or the backup to the backup quarterback. But when you've got to put piecemeal your offensive line together, and as Mike McCarthy pointed out, uh, I think it was today, this will be only the second week in a row they start the same five on the offensive line. That, that, that's, you can't fake wow. that. You cannot fake that. Uh, I, I think the great Larry Lacewell once told me, you know, I can put together a defense and I can do some things to compensate for a lack of talent, but the one thing you can't compensate for is offense. And for sure you can't compensate for not having a quarterback. And, and I think he must have told me that probably in the 2001 season. <coughs> That's Availability. Stuff, yeah. Yeah, availability is the greatest ability <laughs> yeah. for a player to have. And when really, both on offense and defense, when you look at the Steelers, they have got to be one of the healthiest teams in the league. They lost Devin Bush, who's a great inside linebacker. And, and here's what they were able to do. They picked up in a trade Avery Williamson from the Jets last week. When you've got one hole, one major injury to fill, you can go out and at the trade deadline go get a guy who can fill that need for you. But, I mean, you look in their secondary, you look at the rest of their defense, and they, outside of the Devin Bush injury, uh, they're as healthy as you could, could expect to be seven games into the season. And then on offense, it's the same way. I mean, that's a great reason why they are where they are right now at 7-0. and 0. <laughs> 
You can listen live to the Mix Shots podcast weekdays at 1.30 on DallasCowboys.com. The 2-6 and six Cowboys host the 7-0 Pittsburgh Steelers at AT&T Stadium Sunday afternoon at 3.25. Be sure to tune into Cowboys pregame live for an in-depth analysis on both teams starting at 2 p.m. Cowboys pregame live airs on all Dallas Cowboys social platforms. Until next time, I'm Danny Sarek. Thanks so much for watching Cowboys Rewind. Cowboys Rewind was brought to you by AT&T, SWBC Mortgage, financial solutions to help you meet your personal and business goals. Visit swbc.com and by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Want to tour AT&T Stadium? For more information, call 817-892-TOUR or visit dallascowboys.com slash tours.